Okay, so uh, today we are going to look at uh, uh, voting algorithms, uh, and they are important for all sorts of uh, reasons, from the old-fashioned uh, reason of electing uh, your city council to uh, online voting uh, when you vote for the best uh, X and the best Y, right? And uh, um, there are many of them, and we want to kind of very briefly look uh, what uh, their features are. Um, so the idea would be to optimally aggregate the uh, opinion of the community, right? When you vote, <coughs> there is no absolute truth, but it's aggregation of preferences uh, of the community. And uh, uh, we will see how this applies, especially to uh, online business. So there are several uh, voting schemas around uh, uh, both in terms of uh, how the preferences are expressed and uh, also how the preferences are aggregated into the final uh, outcome of the voting. And uh, usually the most common one is uh, uh, when voters uh, uh, submit a list ordered lists of their preferences. So their most preferred candidate is on the first place, on the second place is the second candidate, and uh, then at the very last end place is the least uh, preferred uh, candidate. So once you collect this uh, Voting papers, your task is to determine the outcome, right? And there are several ways to do that. Uh, the first one is called the majority voting. Uh, you simply count uh, how many times. Uh, Uh, each candidate uh, was placed first. And uh, one that uh, is placed first on the largest number of lists uh, is proclaiming the winner, right? So this is why it's called majority. Um, the second uh, way of doing it is called uh, Orta uh, Count. Uh, and uh, it uh, works as follows. Uh, for every list, uh, or for every uh, voter, uh, the first candidate Uh, gets uh, n minus one points. Uh, the second n minus two points, and so forth. The last gets zero points because there are altogether. Uh, n candidates, so the first will get n minus 1 points, n minus 2 points, all the way to 0 points, and then you simply total the number of points uh, each candidate got across all the voting lists. Uh, and whoever got, gets the largest number of, uh, of points, uh, he gets uh, is proclaimed to be the winner. And uh, the final oops, 
that you produce uh, will be consistent. Uh, it might happen that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the lists are such that uh, you get uh, uh, that um, um, simultaneously you have to have A bigger than B and B bigger than uh, A. Uh, uh, and of course, this is impossible because we want to uh, and we uh, we want to have a linear uh, that the ordering is transitive. So if a is bigger than b, b bigger than c, we should have then of course a to be placed above c. But uh, one can show that uh, um, in fact uh, well, this can be violated uh, with uh, Condorcet uh, voting. Yeah. Uh, so then what is the best so this looks a little bit suspicious because it might be inconsistent uh, so which voting uh, procedure uh, should we adopt and interestingly enough uh, uh, it turns out that if you require that the voting aggregation satisfies some axioms that look extremely intuitive, that there is no voting aggregation that satisfies all three, uh, all three, no, sorry, all of the axioms. So you don't have to help me. So let me just. Uh, um, so, uh, actually, you might want to do that. Yeah. Uh, so, the, what are the axioms? The theorem is called Errol's Impossibility uh, Theorem by its authors.
So what are the features that we would like that the voting schema has? Uh, the first um, and most obvious is uh, uh, that uh, it's uh, uh, that each personal, each voter's list is complete and uh, consistent, uh, right? So it is really a linear ordering. Uh, you have first, second, and so forth. So if A is above B and B is above C, then clearly A is above C. So the transitivity of ordering is satisfied. Uh, so this is a very uh, simple uh, property that would, we would definitely want to have uh, for our voting aggregation. Uh, so the second axiom is that the output list is also uh, complete, uh, consistent, Um, and uh, deterministic. What do we mean by deterministic? Uh, the algorithm shouldn't be randomized in any way. So if you, for the same input lists, uh, the output list should always be the same, right? Should not change. So this is really something that uh, is necessary kind of to hold. Okay, yeah. So then uh, the next axiom is uh, no dictator axiom. Uh, which says uh, if uh, everyone, if, if uh, uh, each If every voter uh, except perhaps one uh, vote that A is uh, should be is more preferred than B, uh, then uh, on the final list. A should be above B. Why is this called uh, no dictator? It simply says uh, that if everyone except one person thinks that A is more preferred to B, that one person cannot change the outcome of the vote. So not, no single person should be able to change the outcome against the, the wishes of everyone else, right? Because that's exactly what, this, what it says here. If everyone except maybe one voter thinks that A is preferred to B, then on the final list A should be above B, namely the, this single voter cannot switch. Yes. What if there are only two people? Okay, well, uh, when you have uh, um, um, what kind of election is uh, if the electorate consists of only two people, right? Uh, then we should look for other ways uh, of making decisions. So uh, that's uh, we assume here that the number of voters uh, is bigger or equal than three and the number of candidates are bigger or equal than two. But yes, you are right. Uh, this requires uh, that we have uh, uh, at least three, uh, <coughs> three volumes. Okay, so um, okay, the second, the last axiom 
the fourth axiom is uh, usually called the uh, irrelevance <coughs> axiom that says the following. Uh, if uh, A and B are any two waters, Um, and uh, uh, on the final list, uh, A is placed above B, uh, then no matter uh, how, uh, no matter how you change uh, the ordering of other candidates, uh, oh well, uh, ordering of uh, other candidates on lists, uh, A will stay, stay above B. Why is this uh, a desirable <coughs> axiom? It simply says that whether you think that A is better than B, should be independent of what you think about other people, right? So if you have any lists, right, and you are now allowed to change the ordering, so the voters change their mind about their votes, but they keep the same preferences for A and B. So you are not allowed to swap A and B anywhere then the outcome with respect to A and B should not change, right? Because if the majority, if, uh, if the voters think that A is better than B, what they think about third parties should never affect the outcome of A and between A and B. Yes? A and B are two brothers and brothers. Sorry, say it again? Uh, it says like A and B are any two voters and on the final list A and A is going to be. Yes. A and so, B are two voters. Yes. Uh, so A and B are two voters. Uh, and some voters, uh, sorry, uh, A and B are two candidates. Uh, yeah, but here's the Oh, sure. I'm still not, in, I have too much blood in my caffeine system. <laughs> 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 Let's see if I, oh. okay, thank you very much. At least you are not asleep. And we are two candidates. And on the final list, A is above B. Then no matter how you change uh, the uh, the preferences of voters with respect to a third person, C, right? It should not affect the outcome for A and B, because the outcome with respect of A and B, whether A is placed above B or B is placed above A, should depend only on whether A is preferred to B or B is preferred to A, not on how other uh, voters uh, fair, uh, 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 how other candidates fair. So this all looks uh, uh, natural, right? But the truth is that there is no voting system that uh, meets all of these five axioms, and this is this famous arrows impossibility uh, theorem. 
which shows that actually voting aggregation is a non-trivial uh, task. So we will, uh, it's not that hard to prove. In the original version, it's, the proof is a little bit messier, but uh, I will show you a proof that adds another uh, axiom <coughs> that is perfectly uh, natural, which says uh, if you permute the, uh, the, or rather than permute, I should say, if you relabel the candidates, uh, If you relabel the candidates, the output list uh, will uh, change accordingly. Right, so if I permute just the labeling, who is A, who is B, who is C, just swap the labels on all lists consistently, right? So all the lists are essentially identical, except that the uh, different uh, uh, candidate is called A, different candidate is called B, and different candidate is called C. So obviously every voting should be such that it doesn't matter how you label candidates, right? Uh, so we will show that with these uh, um, five axioms, uh, there is no voting schema that satisfies all of them. And uh, the proof, uh, the original proof can be obtained from the proof that I'm going to show you um, by kind of just a bit uh, a messier argument. Uh, but it doesn't bring anything new, so we will prove uh, with this additional fifth axiom. And the proof is due to an Australian celebrity. Who is the most famous Australian mathematician? You. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, then who is the second famous Australian mathematician? Uh, he is actually now in, uh, at UCLA. Yeah? Have you heard of Terence Tao? Yeah, that's uh, uh, his proof. And it's a very cute uh, uh, proof. So here is a definition. A quorum uh, is uh, a set um, of voters. So set of voters x, say, such that uh, if uh, all voters in X uh, put A above B, then A will be above B on the final list. Right, so X is a set that is powerful enough to decide ordering of any two voters. If people on X think that A is better than B, in the final list, A must be better than B. Can you give me an example of a quorum that follows from the axioms? Which sets are guaranteed to be quorums? So one trivial quorum is which one? If everyone votes A is bigger than B, A is better than B, A should be put better than B, but there are more. Uh, what are the other sets that are also quorums? Exactly. So every set, so note, every set uh, or with uh, 
n minus 1 elements is a quorum. Uh, this is by uh, uh, axiom 3. So n is uh, the total number of voters. Uh, Right, because that's precisely what axiom 3 says. If a set consists of everyone, but maybe one person, uh, this person cannot change the outcome of election. If everyone but one person thinks A is better than B, A has to come above B in the final list. So, this, yes? Final four. Sorry? Final four. Uh, the fourth one is irrelevant. If we uh, swap A and uh, if uh, uh, if uh, you fix A and B uh, right uh, on all lists, the ordering of A and B, and you permute in any way you want the other elements, it will not change the outcome. Right here, uh, number three is the. Uh, uh, the axiom that we are using at the moment, right? Because axiom 3 says if everyone but one voter thinks A is better than B, the, uh, then of course A has to be better than B on the outcome. So, so this is the first observation. The second observation in which we will use the axiom that you are mentioning is uh, if uh, um, uh, sets X and Y are quarrels, right, then uh, X intersected Y is uh, also a quorum. Uh, why is this so? Well, um, let's see. So you have two sets uh, X and Y. And here is their intersection uh, X intersected Y. Uh, so assume um, everyone in uh, X intersected Y uh, puts A above B. I uh, want to show uh, that in the final list A has to be above B, right? So assume the opposite. That B at the end is put above A, yeah? Right? Uh, now, um, what we are going to do is the following. Take a third candidate, and in fact, this, uh, uh, I forgot to add, uh, this, uh, uh, the number of candidates uh, is bigger or equal than 3 for the theorem to work. Uh, so take a third candidate C uh, and uh, uh, change all the lists in X such that uh, A is above C, right? 
Now, this uh, you can do uh, without changing the final outcome that B is placed above A, because by this irrelevance uh, axiom, if uh, you don't change the ordering between A and B, then no matter what you think about other candidates, uh, the ordering of A and B should not change, uh, right? So we can then simply take a third candidate and change all the lists in X to think that A to place A above C. Uh, since X is a quorum um, on the final list, A should be above C. Okay? Now, similarly, on all uh, lists in Y, put C above B. Again, nothing with respect to A and B should change, but since y is a quorum, uh, then on the final list, uh, we should have that c is bigger than b. So on the final list, Uh, A is bigger than C, C is bigger than B, and that's inconsistency because we assumed uh, up here that, of course, this implies, which implies A is bigger than B, and that's inconsistent with uh, uh, this here. Right, so the idea is that uh, the notion of the quorum so the idea is essentially uh, you had, uh, say, two candidates, A and B. The idea is uh, why the third, uh, or which is it, the, the, um, why this uh, axiom, uh, the irrelevance is not very naive, right? So no, not very innocent, right? Is uh, that I can insert C in between and then force a particular ordering which will then by transitivity also force an ordering on A and B. Right? So last year when I was teaching this, I so here what is crucial? It's crucial that we can insert C between A and B. So we can now impose a, a weaker axiom here, which doesn't, so this axiom says, uh, if you keep ordering of A and B the same, no matter what you do with other people, on the outcome, H and B should also stay the same, right? We can ask for something stronger, thus weakening the axiom. Namely, we can ask not only that the ordering between A and B doesn't change, but also that the number of intermediate candidates between A and B should not change. So in a sense, if you like A better than B, uh, so, uh, but almost just uh, because A is just immediately above B, or uh, you are not allowed to insert people in between, right? And so clearly, Tao's argument would break down because here everything is based on inserting C between A and B. And I asked if uh, the impossibility theorem uh, actually still holds, uh, but it turns out uh, Ishrak and Ray uh, uh, proved that, that in fact uh, 
if you weaken the axiom by requiring so the irrelevance uh, how the change the ordering or the candidate on the list A will stay above B but uh, uh, it, besides this you add and the number of candidates between A and B does not change. Then show as an exercise, which you might have on the final, that board account actually satisfies uh, all the axioms. Uh, so uh, in Arrow's uh, uh, impossibility theorem, this irrelevance is crucial uh, for the theorem to hold true, because once you weaken this axiom by strengthening the assumption, what is the assumption? In the original axiom, it only requires that you don't change the ordering of A and B on any of the lists. You should be free to change ordering of all other candidates. The output in terms of whether A is above B should not change. If we weaken the axiom by having the following property, if the ordering between A and B doesn't change on any of the lists, and also the number of candidates between A and B also doesn't change uh, on any of the lists, then A should stay above B. Well, it turns out the possibility no longer holds, uh, and uh, word account actually <coughs> satisfies uh, uh, this uh, uh, set of axioms. So it looks like board account is uh, a, uh, probably among these three the best one. But now we move to <coughs> any questions about uh, this. <coughs> okay, this is a good kind of logic exercise. So, and I will update the lecture notes uh, 